Hello everyone, Nurlar here, and today I'm going to be reviewing the Coleman Power Pack Portable Propane Stove and this canister of propane fuel by Worthington Cylinders because I need it to run this. I purchased this stove from an online retailer for about $30 and we'll find out if that was a good deal or not. Now I did not purchase this for camping or tenting or that sort of thing. Uh, this is a rather large diameter stove. Uh, much larger than most of the dual burner ones that you'll find out there. And uh, I thought that, that would be nice for larger pots and such. This is less portable because of that, but I plan on using this for emergency use. If my power goes out, I'll still be able to cook some food and such. My house is 100% electric. My electricity may go out, but this will always work. Or at least I think so. We'll be reviewing this too. On the box, you can see that it is a Coleman brand and it is the Power Pack trademark stove. I will assume that it's called a Power Pack stove because it is packed with power. We'll find out. It is a 7500 BTU unit. On a typical stove, the small burners are about 5000 BTUs and the large ones are a little bit over 7500, so this is very comparable to your stove top in your house, or at least they claim it is. We'll find out. They say it is fully adjustable from a simmer to uh, full power. Uh, I kind of doubt that. It is a flame, so it can probably only adjust as much as a flame does, but we'll find out. They show a wonderful picture here of some delicious looking French toast, which is not included, I am sure. They show how it sets up. A little pipe goes to your propane tank. I'll open the box and we can actually look at it instead of talking about the box. The other side looks the same as the front. So, before I get to opening the box, let's uh, talk about what everybody's dying to find out about. The review of this Worthington Cylinders propane fuel. It's made out of steel. It has this little cap you can pop off with a Schrader valve underneath. It has a pressure relief valve over here. And it's full of stuff that burns and gets hot and does work and stuff. So, yeah, it's propane. Alright, let's get back to the stove. No review is complete without an unboxing. So, let's unbox it and see what's inside. So it looks like the first thing you'll find is the connector doohickey that goes between the stove and your propane tank. Now I'm always actually pretty interested in these because sometimes these are very poor quality and if you just bend the connections a little bit they can pop off and you end up with propane spraying all over the place. This seems to be pretty well constructed. It's not, uh, not the heaviest thing I've ever seen, but it's pretty thick. This seems to be good quality aluminum. This is a nice steel tube. It's bonded pretty well. Has a what appears to be a good quality brass connector here. So I'm pretty happy with this. If your stove is running and someone bumps it, I don't think this will break off. We'll see how it actually attaches to the stove next. And inside it looks like there's some cardboard packaging. And it appears that uh, there is a flashlight so that you, have, you can see what you're doing. A miniature Eiffel Tower. That's nice. And of course, the heater. The box is now empty except for the manual. We'll take a quick look at that in a minute. But this appears to be the stove. And this is actually pretty large. You can see in comparison to my hand, it's probably, oh, at least a foot across. Well, I guess I can measure. It is 11 and a half inches across. So this will fit a pan with an 11, up to an 11 and a half inch bottom. If it's bigger, you can still use it. It'll rest on top of these raised portions of it, so the pan might slide off but anything that is 11 and a half inches or smaller will sit on this very nicely. I have here a fairly large fry pan and you can see that this fits on here and it doesn't slide off. It uh, holds it on here pretty well. It makes it nice and safe and solid. And that's one of the reasons why I bought a larger one so that I could put a larger pan on it without risk of it sliding off and falling on the floor. But it does mean that small pots don't work that well because the burner is fairly large, so that's maybe not so handy for tenting and such where you may have small pots. This really doesn't work. The 
quality of the finish looks pretty nice. We'll see how resistance to resistant to heat this paint is and such. See if the chrome discolors and whatnot, but it does appear to be very solidly built. I'm very happy with it so far. The bottom is pretty cheap, but you know, just don't bump it and you'll be fine. Um, I'm just going to keep it in the box so it doesn't get damaged. If you just throw this on a pile, it seems like this heat shield is going to get bent up, but I won't do that, so I don't really care. The knob on it is knob-like, and it turns knobbly. Um, yeah, I don't know. We'll see how well it works. And it is time to get Instructified. This is the manual that comes with it. If you're male, you probably want to skip past this part. And uh, the first page is full of safety warnings, danger warnings. This product is fueled by propane gas, invisible, odorless, and flammable. Hmm, sounds dangerous. It is a fire hazard. It is an explosion hazard. You can't store it in above 120 degrees. It is not for home or recreational vehicle use. Check with your, with your local fire safety authority to see what the local regulations are. It is a burn hazard. It's a carbon monoxide hazard. It's a service hazard if you don't maintain it. Wow, they make this thing sound dangerous. I should probably just throw it away. Let's see what's on the next page. Ah, that's much more useful. Hmm, another carbon monoxide warning. They really don't want you to use this indoors, but you know what? I'm going to, and we'll see how much of a hazard it really is. Service safety, leak tests, etc. Light it with a match, who would have guessed? Turn it on, turn it off, screw stuff in. Hmm. Yep, you should have skipped this. And other languages. Alright, well that was pointless. So, toss that aside. And uh, let's get back to the stove. Alright, now that we've read all the instructions, let's uh, try to put this thing together. I didn't actually read how to put it together, but considering there's only two connections to make, how hard can it be, huh? Screw this into that thing. It swivels. Screw that into this thing. This swivels. Alright. Perform the leak test like they said. This looks like a good leak tester, doesn't it? You know what I'm going to use for a leak tester? My nose. I'll uh, smell if there's any leaks because propane is really stinky. And, uh, and then I'll light it up. There doesn't seem to be any leakage except out of the burner where it's supposed to leak. And uh, let's light this thing up and see how clean it burns. Now, I am in my house and I'm not using a match. I'm using this. So I'm clearly not following instructions. And if you read the safety manual, you'll note that uh, most likely when I do this, it will explode into a giant fireball and I will be consumed in its flames. So you may want to look away if you're particularly sensitive, but I'm going to do it this way and not follow instructions. Oh, I guess I was wrong. It works just fine. And uh, it turns up and down. See how low it goes. And uh, I'm quite impressed so far. This burns extremely cleanly and it's very adjustable. I don't know how well the flame shows up on camera. But uh, so far, it seems to be working very well. Let me turn the lights off so you can see how high and low the flame gets. All right, I'm just using this little flashlight here for some ambiance as I light this thing up again. Hopefully you can see it in camera when it's dark. And uh, there it goes. So let's see how high it goes. It's a, a very large flame, but it's nice and blue. If I hold my hand above it, there's lots of heat coming out of there. And let's see how low this goes. Doesn't really matter how low I turn it. The flame is nice and blue. So it seems to burn cleanly down to about this level. And uh, I would say that this is extremely adjustable. That would be 
a nice slow simmer, if even that. So, so far I'm pretty impressed with it. But, I am doing this in my house, and I do like to be safe, so I plan on using this for emergency use, and let's do some tests to see how much this really puts out in terms of carbon dioxide and carbon monoxide. Now you should never use a cook stove like this for emergency heating purposes, unless you're in a very well ventilated area. My house is fairly well sealed, it is not well ventilated, so I will not use this for heat. I have other things for heat. This is a Coleman catalytic heater. It's very nice. I really like this. And uh, this is extremely safe. You can use this in almost any environment. The only thing you have to worry about is oxygen levels and carbon dioxide. I'll make more videos on that later. I'm not going to cover carbon dioxide here except for as a curiosity just to see what it does. And I also have a kerosene heater which also emits no carbon monoxide. At least when it's working properly. But this is not designed to burn cleanly. It looks like it's a nice clean flame. It's nice and blue. It probably won't get my pot sooty. We'll test that too. But it's likely not very safe to use indoors. But I'm not going to just follow the instructions. I want to find out. So let's test this thing out and see how much carbon monoxide it really produces. All right, here we are in my bathroom. And I'm in my bathroom because it is the smallest room in my house with the least amount of interior volume, except for closets and such. And it's a good place to test both carbon monoxide production and carbon dioxide production. This is more of a curiosity in this case because this won't be running for long enough periods of time to cause an issue, but I'm gonna put it in here because it's interesting. I had done a video on this earlier. You can watch that if you want. But uh, I will do more videos on carbon dioxide and oxygen level safeties in the future. For this test, I'm mostly just concerned about carbon monoxide. Now, I bet you guys didn't think you were going to watch a video on YouTube about a guy in his bathroom today, did you? But uh, here I am. It's a pretty small bathroom, really. And uh, let's light this thing up and see what it does. Now, earlier I had, uh, in my previous video where I covered this, I talked about this heater. I put this in the bathroom for five minutes, let it run, and uh, it produced zero <clears throat> carbon monoxide. I don't know what this will produce, and we're going to find out. I don't like blindly following instructions. I like to actually know. So I'm going to test it, and we'll find out if using a stove like this indoors really is a hazard or not. Now that little heater that I had just shown you, that is only about 3,000 BTUs. This is about 7,500, according to the instructions. Now, I'm not actually going to measure its output in this review, uh, because that would be fairly difficult to do scientifically, and I don't have the equipment here for it. But uh, what I am going to do to make it roughly equivalent is I'm just going to turn this to about medium. Uh, so it's not high, not low, somewhere in between. It'll probably be about 3,000 BTUs. And uh, we'll just see what these meters do in the meantime. I'll probably walk out of here and uh, go do something else, but after five minutes or so, we'll come back in and check these out, see how they're doing. So let's light this thing up. Flame, light. There we go. And I have it on a medium-ish setting. This is high. This is low. I'll set it somewhere in between. And... Uh, We'll just give this a few minutes and see what happens. To start at zero, and while I'm in here, might as well talk about this. This meter does seem to be calibrated approximately correctly. <clears throat> as I'm filming this, I live in an area that is relatively free of pollution. So, and I'm also in the Northern Hemisphere. Uh, it's nearing the end of the Northern Hemisphere's growing season, which is the lowest level of carbon dioxide in the season. If I put this outside, it reads about 360 to 380 ppm, so it's pretty close. When I bring it inside, it jumps up to about 800. That means that my house is pretty well sealed, which I like. Uh, but uh, with this running, this will undoubtedly increase over time. So I'm going to let this go for, turn it up a little higher. I'm going to let this go for five minutes or so. And we'll come back in here and check these meters. Also, for a curiosity, it is 72 degrees in here. We'll see how much this heats the room up in five minutes. 
Well, the heater's been running for five minutes, and it's made this room very uncomfortably warm. So its heat output seems to be pretty considerable. Carbon monoxide is still at zero. Carbon dioxide is only slightly higher. Now, I think the reason that this isn't increasing very much is because if I put my hand up here near the ceiling, it's very, very hot. Down at the floor, it's cold. So I think it's a matter of airflow. What I'm going to do is put a small fan in this room to mix the air up well uh, so we can get accurate readings on these. And I'm going to let it run for about five more minutes. So it'll be in here for a total of around ten minutes. And uh, then we'll see what these levels are at that point. All right, it's been ten minutes. Let's see how it's doing in this room. Well, the room isn't engulfed in flames, so that's a good start. And, uh, oh my god, is it hot in here. It, uh, it's at well over 80. This thermometer says 79, but I think it's just lagging. It's hot in here. This thing's really throwing out some heat. We'll get to a, uh, a heat test after this, but uh, you can see that the carbon monoxide is still at zero. Now, I've used this meter in other videos, and I know it works. I know that it's very sensitive, and I know that it responds very quickly. So, that means that this puts out very little carbon monoxide. You can safely use this indoors. Now, I would not use it as a source of heat. It's not designed to be used that way. And in an emergency, you probably could, but I certainly wouldn't recommend it, and I would never use any sort of appliance like this without a carbon monoxide detector. Because while it may not be putting it out now, if it starts to operate improperly, it could put out very large amounts of it, and you want to be warned of it. Now the carbon dioxide level in here is getting to be pretty high. I have a fan circulating the air, so I think it's pretty well mixed now. This does lag by about a minute or so, but uh, 3000 ppm is not dangerous whatsoever. I could be in here for hours on end with no symptoms at all, but it does uh, mean that it produces carbon dioxide. Now that's simply a matter of burning fuel. Anything that burns fuel is going to produce it, so this is more of a curiosity. But this test shows that it puts out very little carbon monoxide. And in terms of odor in this room, the odor really is uh, not bad. It just smells like burning fossil fuels, uh, if you know what that smells like. Uh, a lot of people actually don't. But uh, there's no smoke or anything like that, no smell of anything, just, just flame. Uh, so it certainly doesn't smell bad in any way. It appears to do exactly what I bought this thing for. In an emergency, I can use this to cook, cook food indoors, and I can do it safely. Now, you do want to note that if something should happen to these connections, if they leak because the gaskets get perished or something, or if because someone bends, bumps them and they disconnect and start spraying propane all over, uh, you could end up with a pretty bad fire situation, so the manual says not to use it indoors, and, well, if you're going to do that, be careful, but I intend to use it there. Another thing of interest to me is that this propane canister is very cold. That means that it's using propane at a pretty good rate. I'm not sure what the output of this is, but I'm thinking that it may be higher than it is advertised to be. Now, this has been running for quite a while, and you can probably see that it did discolor somewhat. These uh, stainless steel, hopefully, or oh, maybe they're chrome, well... Hopefully they're stainless steel, I don't know what they are. But they discolored somewhat, just like a, a hot oven rack would. And this nice shiny cover in the middle is now darkened. But I don't care, I just want it to work. And the construction quality seems quite good. Let's uh, lift it up and see how hot the bottom got now. And if I put my uh, hand underneath, the bottom is very warm. But not so hot as to cause problems. And this is the temperature of the surface that it was on. It made it up to only 80 degrees Fahrenheit. So you can safely use this on just about any surface. It won't make it very warm at all. In fact, I can hardly feel any warmth, just a small amount. So it is protected pretty well from whatever surface you set it on. All right, let's do a little test. I'm going to compare that stove to my stove here. I know that this one works. It is a flat top, which looks nice and shiny but I absolutely hate it. Does anybody else hate these things? They work so, so poorly. I just absolutely hate it. Anyway, so I set my ordinary saucepan on the burner. I have two cups of cold water that I will dump into the pan. 
you'll want to pay attention here. This is a, a family secret recipe for boiled water. And uh, I put the lid on it and turn the burner on. So this is the small burner on my stove. I could turn the big one on, but uh, my pan isn't big enough. So let's see how long it takes this to boil water in uh, this saucepan on my ordinary stove. I will then repeat this process and see how long it takes on the Coleman stove that I'm reviewing. First you watch a video of a guy in his bathroom and now you're watching water boil. Wow. Anyway, it's been four minutes and uh, let's see how close we're getting here. Looks like uh, 170 degrees Fahrenheit on the surface. So it's got a little ways to go. But uh, I'll just keep this on here and see how long it takes. It's been about six minutes and it would appear to be a uh, pretty good rolling boil here. So I will dump this water out and put the exact same test again once the pan cools off onto the Coleman stove and see how long that one takes to boil some water. Also look for soot on the bottom of the pan in case anyone's interested in that. Time for the exact same test on the Coleman stove. First thing I want to do is light it. It lights very easily. I like that. And uh, I'll put my pan on here, dump the water in. Two cups of water. I will put the lid on, which I forgot at the moment, but I'll put the lid on and uh, we'll see how long this takes. Here's the lid. And uh, I'm not going to turn the flame, you know, to super high, but I'll put it pretty much pretty much as high as it goes, and uh, we're just going to wait. And I'm timing it just like before. We'll see how long this takes. Now the stove burner that I used was a small burner. That's probably about 5,000 BTUs. This one, this flame, is uh, probably around 7,500 like they advertise. Now if I look underneath, you can see that the uh, flame pretty well stays underneath the pan. There isn't a lot of waste heat. It's not like the flame laps up around it. So if you put your hand up around the pan, there definitely is heat escaping. That is waste. But it's not a lot. So you can use a relatively small pan on this burner. Or a larger one. I like the way it's designed. It seems to work very well. But before I give it too many compliments, let's see how long it takes to boil this water. It should be less than six minutes. Wow, that was so fast I just about missed it. Let's turn this thing off. That is really boiling. It took about two and a half minutes and uh, it was violently boiling. So this does put out the BTUs. It'll put out far more than my crappy stove. Um, very happy with it that way. I'm not going to test whether it'll do a slow simmer or not. It seems to be very well adjustable for a, a, a gas burner of any sort. They never will go as low as an electric burner. But it is instantaneously adjustable and it works really well. So uh, once this uh, settles down a little bit I'm going to take this pan off, pour out the water, cool it off, and let's check and see if there's any soot on the bottom. Here's the bottom of that pan that was just on the burner. You can see that it's perfectly clean. Completely shiny, no soot whatsoever. So this burns very cleanly. I'm very happy with it so far. It discolored a little bit further in, uh, in its testing, but overall it seems to be made quite well. The knob is very adjustable, it's very easy to adjust, it's easy to assemble. The assembly is pretty solid, I'm not too worried about this breaking off or whatnot. You can put a fairly large pan on top of it without any issue of it sliding off. Even smaller pans get stuck by these little notches that they cut into these supports. So it seems to be well designed and well put together. Overall, I'm very happy with it. Also, the Worthington propane cylinder worked extremely well. Uh, yeah, it probably doesn't matter whose you buy. They're pretty well regulated by federal law. They all have to be identical. 16.4 ounces is the maximum that they can sell these as. That's why they're all 16 ounces or less, 16.4. Uh, if you store a 20 pound propane tank, for example, in your house and use that, if something should happen, your insurance company will likely not pay you a penny. So, use these. It's much smarter. But, for the 
Coleman Power Pack Stove. Uh, overall, my review is positive. I can't find anything to complain about, which is somewhat surprising, but uh, I would recommend. I like my purchase, and uh, I would recommend purchasing one of these if you're worried about uh, power outages and such. Now, it is pretty large, so it may not be the best choice for camping, tenting, that sort of thing, but it does put out a lot of heat. It's very adjustable. The assembly quality is pretty darn good. It puts out very little carbon monoxide. It was too low to measure on my meter, even in that tiny room. And uh, it doesn't put out any soot on your pans. Um, yeah, <clears throat> seems pretty nice. So that's my review of the Coleman Power Pack Propane Stove. I will have more videos coming out in the future on emergency preparedness, on things such as carbon dioxide, carbon monoxide safety, uh, kerosene heater safety, that sort of thing. But in the meantime, Thanks for watching.